that Aura Fire is a bit behind on and something like R Hiroshi can, of course, capitalize over. But when it comes to the Hayabusa, I don't see how far and how much of an impact he does. But on the flip hand, Aura Fire, the only source of CC is going to be that Kufra. Well, honestly, Ghani, the crowd is hype. Fast prediction based on the draft. Honestly, based on the draft, I like Aura Fire's composition. Same. Same. A turn on quick same, prediction. Same, same, same. Three for Aura, but I want to know you guys as well. Back at home, it's hashtag Aura Fire or hashtag Viva RRQ. We're going to dive straight into the portal here for the Land of Dawn, for the battle for that top position. It's going to be Aura and RRQ. Okay, we'll see. With these different type of compositions that they have brought to the table, how will this fare, okay? We see a lot of dominance as well as aggression from Araki Hoshi with the Matilda, with the Yeev as well. But on the flip side, Aura Fire, they have Godiva on his really comfort pick on this Kufra. So if Araki Hoshi can actually stave away from the potential coming in from Godiva on this Kufra, I do think Araki Hoshi can also take it in the early Whoa. game and snowball into the later stages of the game. It's high actually picking up the Demon Slayer talent here. He's not going for the killing spree on an assassin. And he is going to be able to actually steal some camps away from Albert in the early stage. Remember, he just used that retribution. So he actually does have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to this clear. Yeah, that's true. And again, if you talk about composition here, RRQ, they really somehow want to get fresh in the early game, but also to somehow give space for Skylar to farm to Skylar to secure objectives. And Aura Fire, from their composition after level four, they will look for a fight. Yeah, 100%. I think that's exactly what they're trying to do right now. We can see and feel the Albert. setup coming in from both teams as Albert is going a little aggressive here onto Fluffy. Yeah, he goes over to Quad Shadow and now it's going to be the Shurikens coming in. He doesn't choose to go for the Shadow Kill as Fluffy actually pops that flicker to get out high now. Looking for some damage, but in the top side, what just happened? Kabuki gets the first blood on to Skylar. Remember when I said that this, well, when you said that this will be the highlight lane, the lane, it's already happening, Gani. Godiva playing for it, and Kabuki getting the better of Skylar. Yeah, that is definitely a lane to watch here. And understanding the potential coming from Yuzong, I do feel he has an upper moment, knowing that it is a fighter going against an MM. So in the earlier stage of the game, obviously it is going to be Kabuki being able to get the better of Skylar there in that game. But now we can see already rotations coming in from both teams. They want to be able to take this turtle, understanding the importance, the buff, and the potential that the turtle can bring to them, especially when they're going for early game team fights as well as skirmishes. Yeah, we can take a look here. Face Sugger, Fluffy, and as well as, of course, Karina is already <laughs> level four, so I feel like they want to contest this turtle. Well, R7 goes up for the knockout strike. Fluffy actually whiffs that. Falling Star Moon Violence, still able to get away as high, has the upper edge here in the early game. But only a 400 gold lead so far. Both teams chooses to disengage, not looking for anything else. Albert picks up the little Wanderer, and both teams actually playing for the opposite side of the map right now. Well, let's take a look at the tempo here. Oh, hi, already somehow deal damage. But yeah, composition-wise here, RRQ, they want to contest as well. Remember, with that real-world manipulation, I feel like the space there is there for a side of RRQ. Well, Godiva actually goes in for the Times Revenge. He's going to be high zoned away by the real world manipulation, but instantly defender airstrike with a volley time as well. High picks up the turtle. R7 gets away, but it is the objective picked up. Violence now looking for a re engage. Perhaps he doesn't have the circle eagle. Just yet. going to be Albert coming in with the damage, and he pops in a shadow kill just in time. Godiva gets out, but high gets taken down. The baby alien picks up a double, and that is the gold lead shifting to the kings. Three members taken down from the side of Aura Fire just like Ooh. that in one part so you can see by it might be a fourth here Ruko. what the heck albert he controls the jungle fluffy going for the falling simon will be able to actually no albert he gets it without the retribution r7 gets 150 gold from that turret 1.2k gold lead 1.2k gold lead it was a 500 gold lead from the side of aura fire instantly shifted and instantly multiplied and that is an wow. insane amount of what? Synergy? Micro abilities coming in from Araki Hoshi? It did seem like Aura Fire had the better setup. So what particularly did happen here? They overcommit. They already got that turtle. They should just disengage and retreat. But they stayed. They stayed in that turtle pit looking for a fight. And Albert was just in time to come in with that shadow kill popping off. And there you go. Dismantling Aura Fire Whoa. and engage. 
They use everything for that bush right there. Violence is going to be get caught. Oh my god, he actually gets away right now. And there you go. Amber jumps over the shadow kill. Going to be able to get onto Godiva as that's going to be the kill picked up by the real world manipulation of Clay. Aura, they're making gambles on the map. It's not paying off. And look at our seven. He goes in and she smashes high to bits in that bottom side. A 2.4k gold lead. In a way, it does seem like RFU Hoshi, they're not really setting up for anything in particular. Sure, they're going for the pickups like they're going for now onto Fluffy, but Aura Fire, they're trying to be what? They, they're trying to take the initiative, but every time they do, they just get instantly punished by RFU Hoshi. Yeah, remember, they are leading, they have the map pressure, and I feel like Aura Fire somehow. There's no synergy here in the first five minutes. We will see here the second turtle. Aura Fire should just let it go, man. Aura Q should be able to just take this freely. Oh man, there you go. Facehugger trying to run away, but it's going to be the Shadow Kill following through the wall. He goes in for the Quad Shadow as well. Kabuki now looking for a re-engage, but this might prove costly. He jumps in onto the backside. Violence is going to be targeted, but Circling Eagle will be popped to get him out of there. Kabuki now going in for the Furious Dive, unable to connect. They're committing though, as the following Star Moon will be able to connect there. Skyler gets taken down. Aura Fire are not going to be able to win this though. It's a two for two, but it might be more. Fluffy and My Godiva God. running for the hills as Facehugger has just respawn. Godiva now in the midst of it all. Feather and Strike gonna be popped, but the damage is just simply not there yet. R7 goes in for the knockout strike. Is able to take Godiva off the map. And there you go. That was a 4 for 2. Man, oh man. If you take a look at the game plan here, that setup. R7 zones out. Not the damage dealer, but Godiva. Why? Because Godiva is the turntable. Uh, it's a dealer, deal breaker. With that Kufra, Momentum could just shift and R7 just zones out Kufra for coming into the battle. My god, the way that they're playing right now. And honestly, if I want to see this, I'd like to see it better and bigger on the big screen, guys. And it turns out you can get a 50% discount on your MPL S9 ticket if you buy the Garuda Splash. So a promotion there for the side of Cinepolis. Don't forget to check that out. But yeah, back to the game. It seems like another end gauge might be happening. Yeah, Goriva goes in, but the Circling Eagle will be able to just nullify all that CC. Furious Dive does connect, but Violence will be taken down. Real World Manipulation dealing so much damage onto High Force to back away. And there you go. It is a trade, but High needs to back off in the mid lane. Though. What the heck? Albert goes in for the 1v3. That's going to be the backup as well. Or Seven dives under. That turret to pick up the kill. Godiva and Fluffy now trying to look for the trade. But R7 is actually going to be able to bring Fluffy back to his team. A monster kill for Albert. A 5k gold lead. This is dominance. 5,000 in the 7th, almost 8th minute here. And Arki Hoshi, they're looking strong as ever. And honestly, when it comes to contesting these neutral objectives, Aura Fire, they needed a bit more just for the fact that our Hoshi, they do have the Popol and Koopa, so they do have some late game insurance. And I understand that Aura Fire has Facehugger, has the Farsa to be able to help them scale a bit better into the late game, but going against the DPS, the dive in coming in from our Hoshi, I don't see how that's too much of As a possibility. Yeah, especially three turrets has gone down here for a set of Aura, so again, Movement, farm space, they are limited now. With RRQ practically controlling the game, map pressure as well, our fire, they need to somehow find the turnaround. And how is that? They really need to f f somehow find Clay or even Albert with perhaps trading just a member from inside of Aura. And then it's, it's okay, it's a fair trade. But again, RRQ with the always the proactiveness, now they are looking for the Lord. Man, that's going to be so difficult to do, and Arkyoshi uh -oh. will be able to take this really fast, but look at this! Yeah, already a free lord taken away, Albert pops in the quad shadow of violence, might have just overextended there, Kabuki now caught in the midst of the all, going for the falling star, oh my god, it's gonna be an all-out fight, High jumps in, Kabuki's able to sustain for a bit, but the damage will be enough to take him down, High with all the tank items, he's trying to get away, but R7 jumps in with the damage, Fluffy is trying to buy some time, but in the end, a 2 for 0 on top of the lord, Godiva flickers out, out and R7 will be able to back away. That is a two for zero. Again, with the Lord Ghani, Aura have been outclassed this game. Holy moly, as yeah. Let's take a look at the items here. Ice screen one for Clay. Extra damage, extra slow effect as well. Albert, almost three items here. Endless battle is nearly there. So with BOD and as well as the true damage coming in for later in the endless battle, Aura fire. 
they seem they they will just they can't withstand the yeah. pressure. The problem Almost is, 10k. Yeah, the problem is Aura Fire, they like to play alone together. And I think Araki Hoshi, they've read that and they're exploiting it. They're trying to bring Fluffy away from the other members of the team, being able to take him down. And they're doing the same thing to the other members like Facehugger, like Kabuki, like Hai, as well as Godiva. And man, 9,000 gold lead now in the 10th minute. This is extremely different and very hard to see for the side of Aura Fire. Uh, just take a look at the player's goal. Three members from the side of RRQ, the damage dealers per se, Albert, Paquito, R7, as well as Skyler, are the top three for the side of player's goal. But yeah, remember, Antikiras for the side of RR Fire. Hayabusa does not trigger Antikiras. The passive, it does not trigger. The shadow kill does not trigger. So, uh, RR Fire, they really need to somehow find a way to withstand the damage from Albert, but then again, they are 9k behind, so it is going to be a perhaps close to impossible job for side of Aura Fire. They just need to catch with Godiva and just take a Hayabusa, Hayabusa down. Yeah, it's a 10,000 gold lead right now for the King of Kings. And look what they're doing with the waves. They're freezing it. They don't want to go for the push in instantly, but I might be wrong. They're actually going for the mid lane push here. Not sure what they're planning to do. Might be... You know, they might want to just control this purple buff. I think that's what they're going for here with Clay R7. Yep, and Skylar rotating towards that purple buff. They're trying to take away the resources from Aura Fire. It might just be a contest. We all know that Aura, they like to fight fire with fire here. With the purple buff up, Violence opening up the map. Kabuki jumping over some damage. That's going to be Fluffy brought back to the team by their airstrike. Going to be able to zone these members away. But Alfred, he actually jumps in aggressively. He gets chunked really low. High goes in for some damage, but it is going to be the Shadow Kill bringing him out. Now, the damage will be enough. Alfred just styles on them as Popo dismantles them. Aura Fire have lost two before the Lord. Fluffy's next. He's gonna get taken down. No, that's Godiva. They've lost their frontliner. A three for zero. What for? For the purple buff. For the purple buff. So a weird display of play coming in from Aura Fire, especially now. They are three members down. It does seem like Araki Hoshi, they want more. Well, there you go. Violence jumps in with that with the circling eagle. It might just be the turret taken down. All our kill. They're gonna rotate instantly towards the enhanced lord. 12k gold lead. Very similar to the first game against Evos. Yeah, and then now they are getting the buff away from Aura Fire. They're going to the next objective. And this is exactly what I was talking about. If Aura Kiyoshi, they can play as disciplined as they are right now, they oh. definitely will be able to get an upper edge onto Aura Fire. And now, look at Aura Fire. They're roaming as a five team. Maybe they're looking for a pickoff, but it does look something like a desperate endeavor here. Man, take a look at Albert, man. Already building that, securing that Malefic Roar as well. So penetration through damage and as well as most physical damage from that, uh, that BOD is there for side of Alberts. Meanwhile, we take a look at High building all full defense, but then again, they are too behind to somehow find something. Even go Diva, opening visions, opening maps, trying to take the momentum away from side of RRQ. It is so hard because the damage isn't there. And look at how they're micromanaging these waves. It is going to be a three-lane push from the side of RRQ. This just might be the end for Aura Fire here in game number one. Four to 18, a 14k gold lead. They do have some high ground, but they're using it onto that top side. Mid lane is still up for grabs here. The Lord has been chunked to half HP. Albert jumps in for Facehugger. That's going to be the channel kill going in. Facehugger gets melted down. Kabuki going in now with the Black Dragon form. Going to be able to bring Violence back to the base, but it's going to be damage enough. No, Violence gets out, and that's going to be the real world manipulation. Zoning everybody. Oh, there you go. Buki jumping in for the Fury's Eye. Fluffy as well with the Falling Star Move. He's gonna get bursted down. Go Diva tries to save the team with a Tyrant's Rage. That's a three for zero. That's a four for zero. It might be the wipeout, but Kabuki is not gonna give it to them. Game number one for RRQ. RRQ. Again, showing wow. their qualities here. Not messing around game number one. They were sharp. They executed their game plan. 